Today, joining me uh, as a co-host is Ultimate 23 Dragon. How are you doing today? I'm doing very good. Now, she and I, you know, we're both NASCAR fans, you know, and, and uh, I'm a racing journalist. Today, I am honored to introduce somebody who, if you live in the Grand Rapids area, you'll know who this guy is. He used, to, I believe he used to work for the Grand Rapids Press, he's now with M Live. He's covered a specific driver from Michigan, uh, and he was on NASCAR Race Hub for this driver, that in which you've seen it on uh, Ultimate 23 Dragons channel. Steve Kaminsky from M Live News, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm great. I'm great, Alex. Thanks for having me today. And, and actually, I'm still with the Grand Rapids Press. The Grand Rapids Press is, um, I guess I'm live, you could say, is the Grand Rapids Press website. Yes, it's part of a, actually, I'm live, encompasses all the uh, newspapers part of this Grand Rapids Press page. So, yeah, I'm still with Press, actually. So. Okay. So, um, yeah, I know my uh, Zoom number is not the best because of my uh, computer settings, but uh, kind of tell us who you are what you're, and uh, what you're about. Well, I've been covering up, I've been writing for the press now for well, you know, over 35 years. And uh, I've had a chance to, uh, in, during that time, cover just about every different sport that there is for, uh, for, for Grand Rapids, uh, for the Grand Rapids Press I'm Live. I've um, and that's auto racing. I've done a lot of the, the uh, auto racing scene across West Michigan for uh, during most of that time, too. Uh, there was a whole lot of reports this summer, unfortunately, with the pandemic. But uh, we're certainly hoping 2021 brings, uh, brings some better days as far as what those sports really goes. Yeah, I agree. So um, do you want me to mention your first name? I'm just going to refer to you as Dragon here. That's okay. All right. Um, so uh, Mary has some questions for you. Um, so sure. we'll, uh, we'll open the floor for her first and, um, you can answer her questions. Then I've got a list here and, uh, you can, uh, answer my questions. So Mary, the floor is yours. Okay. First question I have for you is what got you started in your You know, I always just enjoyed writing and I enjoyed sports and I guess from a very young age, I knew I wanted to be a, a writer and I, I think even back probably when I was eight, nine years old, I probably had an idea that this was kind of wanted, what I wanted to do at that point. I had a, uh, a really a passion for bowls. I wasn't much of an athlete, so I figured, well, I'll be a writer. I'm just going to the game that way. So that helped me uh, stick with the game growing up, you know, some school newspapers and stuff. And it just, you know, it just kind of went from there. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, are you originally from the state of Michigan? And if, if so, which part? Yep, I grew up in Grand Rapids. Uh, lived here all my life. Uh, went to Preston oh. Beach. Oh, it's no longer exists, actually. That folded a, about a decade ago. But I went to uh, uh, Preston High School, and then I went to Grand Rapids State University, too. And I uh, was working at the press when I was still in high school, and I just kind of, kind of stayed with it. Hmm. Very cool. So I noticed earlier that you said that you covered all sorts of sports. Other than auto racing, what was your favorite sport to cover? Oh, boy. A little bit of, uh, you know, I enjoy covering the local boxing scene. I've done that. It's a little bit different. I do a lot of local high schools, too. Well, that's always fun to get out and chance and to meet the high school kids and the coaches. Um, I, I like the variety that we have in Grand Rapids because it, uh, it's always changing. we got a good, strong high school uh following here, readership, plus we have pro teams like the Grand Rapids Reds and the West Michigan Whitecaps, and we have big special events like the Riverbank Run and, and uh, all sorts of big auto racing, local auto racing, the boxing, the Golden Gloves tournaments. So, so I really just like the variety that we have here in West Michigan. It's, uh, it's always something different, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, that's fun with the boxing stuff, but that's <laughs> That's very interesting. I never would have considered Grand Rapids to be a boxing club. Oh, it is. So, at... Among all your years. <laughs> Repeat that again. Yeah, just, well, look, you know, we have some great boxers coming out of West Michigan, a lot of Golden Glove champs, you know, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, from the Grand Rapids area. And, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've had a boxing tradition over the decades. Yeah, and uh, Muhammad Ali lived in Barry Springs for a little while, which is not far from St. Right. Joe, where I live. 
Did you ever get to meet him? Ali? Yes. No, I never did. I actually was at a race, though, um, back at Michigan University it must be about 20 years ago, and he served as a grand marshal. 2001 Kmart 400 when Jeff Gordon won. Bill Elliott drove yeah. the Muhammad Ali car. I've got that yeah. die cast. <laughs> yeah, that's a... And I remember that because Bill Elliott's one of my favorites. He's my second favorite <laughs> overall. Yeah. You can take a guess on who her first one is overall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so among all your years of reporting, do you have a favorite report that you have ever done? A favorite report that I've ever done? Ooh, a favorite story. Mm. I don't know if I've had a favorite story. I've had some, some very memorable ones. I wouldn't say it was my favorite, but I covered the Daytona 500 uh, a, a few times uh, back when Johnny Hudson was racing. And Dale Earnhardt won the 1998 Daytona 500 after years of trying. I would have to say that was probably one of the most memorable ones. Probably the most tragic was three years later when he was killed. Uh, I was at that one as well, too. Um, yeah, so I would say probably some of the big Daytona races that I've had a chance to cover probably were, were the most memorable, good and bad. Yeah, and I think probably most memorable for sure was 2009 at Berlin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was a scary night. That was. That was, a, yeah. that was definitely a, 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 yeah, an awful night. So. Uh, for uh, for anyone that was there, it uh, certainly was a scary night. Uh, fortunately, things worked out well with that one. Uh, and I know Alex, you're referring to the night Johnny Benson got in a very horrific wreck. Oh yeah, the modified race. And we, as you mentioned before, we I, I was in a, a race up about that when we did the where is he now section. Um, and uh, yeah, but he was not, he was pretty uh, damaged, but uh, fortunately he recovered. And that's something I admire about Johnny Benson is his resilience. And that's what I'm going to put in my book that I write, uh, you know, at the end saying, like, this is why I like Johnny Benson. This is like what inspired me to do this and how he was able to recover from his, from, you know, his lows and he was able to make a high out of them. Because as Mary remembers very well, Johnny broke his ribs twice in 2002 and then came to win out in Rockingham and won. So that was a big day for Pretty much everybody in West Michigan. I believe that was the first race I was alive for. Yeah, yeah. For his uh, first career victory in the Cup Series, proved his only career in the Cup. Uh, he, he did go back down to trucks and won championship then, and won several races. <laughs> so, how <laughs> back answers my next question? Because the next question I had on docket was Who was your favorite driver to cover from the state of Michigan? You know, uh, you know obviously. Johnny was, was one of them, you know, he uh, he had a, a, such a great career, you know, won championships in Xfinity, Bush International back then, and, 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 you know, he had a nice late career in a cup, I believe, he ran about eight seasons in cup, and he won, was competitive, uh, he, he certainly ranks up there. A uh, little before Johnny, we had Rich Miller, uh, was really from Porter's, lived in Cooperstown, and and he ran in Cup uh, uh, for a little bit, found success in trucks and Xfinity, and uh, did great in the uh, American Speed Association Series. We, we had a lot of them, too. But, um, you know, John, John Tack was before my time, but uh, you know, from Hastings, went on to win a couple of uh, Indy 500s. Uh, Tim Steele won oh, yes. several championships. Uh, we, we had Bob Seneca, who was a legend in the American Speed Association, and just tore up the Midwest circuits, short tracks for many years. Uh, boy, we're, there's just been a there's been a lot of them. Uh, Jack Spray from over at Spring Lake went on to win, I believe, three truck championships too. This has been, you know, just a great area and uh, the producing, you know, very successful race car drivers. We got Brad Keselowski over from not Grand Rapids, but over from the East Side, Rochester over, Hills. Yeah, yeah, Rochester Hills. Now we have Eric Jones, you know, from Butter Michigan, who's who, who's won a truck championship and have, has won a couple of cup races uh, too. So we got a couple of guys in cup right now from with Michigan roots. And before we get into Mary's last question, you've been covering Carson Hosevar 
a friend of mine for quite a few years now. Where do you see his career going? Yeah, I'm very excited to see what what's next for Carson. He's a great driver. He's a great kid, well-spoken. I think he has potential to have a nice, lengthy career. I can't wait to see what he does in trucks next year. I think that's a, that's a great opportunity for him. I think he's going to be competitive. Uh, uh, he's got from a good family. I think, you know, he he's reminds me a lot of, you know, what Johnny Dustin had going for him, which was a good driver, good family, good guy, well-spoken. You know, he has a lot of tools uh, to really have a nice, successful career. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's uh, he's fantastic. And that is of an interesting note because Johnny is actually Carson's mentor. Yes, yes. I remember uh, talking to Johnny maybe five, six years ago. Talking, I think Carson was 11 or 12, and he said he was working with this kid. Because this, this is the young kid who's going to race late miles. He was like 11 or 12. And, uh, that was a tie on him, and it didn't take long to figure out why because Carson went out and was very competitive against racing, you know, for, for decades out there. So, And, uh, uh, Mary's got one last question for you, and then uh, I've got a few questions. Sure. Well, earlier you had said that Gordon Johncock was before your time, so presumably Johnny's father, John Benson Sr., was also before your time. So when did you exactly start covering Johnny Benson? You know, I first started covering auto racing in 1987, and I went out to Berlin Raceway, and I covered the ASA race there. And I got hooked pretty quickly on it. And Johnny was just coming up at that point. So I would probably, probably say right around 87, 88 when he, uh, Johnny first started off racing dirt tracks. And then he came over to Berlin where his father won so many championships through the 1970s. And Johnny adapted quick, pretty quickly to the asphalt out there and started winning races. So I, I would say probably 87, 88 around that time, Johnny's career started taking off. Right, right about the time I started getting a, getting heavily to uh, covering it for the past. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mary, for those questions. Um, you, you know, you can also uh, ask follow-up questions to the questions that I ask. Um, so th this is something, you know, you and I talked about on Facebook. Um, would you be willing to share a Johnny Benson story with us uh, due to covering his career for so long? Well, yeah, I mean, there's so many. You know, I, I don't know what. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for something on track or off track. Uh, Anything. Yeah, you know, Johnny was, like I said before, anything that stands out from, for Johnny was probably, you know, just, you know, uh, growing up, you know, as part of the second generation driver. Uh, and he didn't really start racing until I believe he was 19 years old, which nowadays, I think when Carson is 17 or 18, and he's <laughs> for three years already. So it was a different time back then. And Johnny really wasn't. Um, like growing up in high school, I, I remember one of the stories he told me. He said one of his high school teachers at Forest Hills Northern said, are you going to race? And he said, nah, I'm not going to do that. And Johnny, by that time, Johnny Benson, Benson Sr. was already in the staff, was, you know, champion out at Berlin. But, um, you know, I, I think Johnny just started off doing something uh, that's kind of a hobby. I think if you asked him when he was 19 years old, uh, if he was going to be racing, uh, you know, a cup, he probably – would have said no. This wasn't something that he had aspired to do. And I think with Johnny, it just he just started racing and he just started winning and he was very successful and it just kind of snowballed. And um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that was kind of kind of unique about it uh, is that uh, the way his career kind of kind of lost him. Uh, I, I don't think he was that off to be uh, you know a NASCAR. You know, two-time NASCAR champion and a, and a cup winner and, and rookie of the year and all that stuff. I, I just watching the way his career evolved was was pretty. It's a pretty neat story. Yeah, my grandfather worked with his wife up at KV in Grand Rapids, but he worked at Modar in Benton Harbor. Um, Steve, I'm not sure if you know where the St. Joseph Benton Harbor area is, but it's in the southwest corner of Michigan. Sure. Um, so, uh, back to the Johnny Benson stories. Can you share one, uh, on track story of Johnny Benson? Boy, Not 2009. What? I'm sorry? Not 2009. Nothing from 2009 qualifies for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember when Johnny came back after, I believe, 1996. 
and he had a, he had been racing uh, in that was the rookie season. He was racing with the the, the Pennzoil car, and I remember he came back for a uh, for I believe it was an ASA race at Berlin, and uh, he came out and ran with the ASA guys. And uh, I want to say it was it was like a midweek special or something, and he ended up coming back and winning that race, and uh, it was a packed house and. Uh, Johnny at that time was running Cup, and uh, he it was like a, he won like over thirty thousand dollars at that night. So it was a pretty nice. Uh, it was I mean, it was a big thing back in the Midwest back in the eighties and nineties seven, and that was a big win for him. And I remember the crowd just went crazy that night, and it, it showed me at that point how how beloved he was uh, here in West Michigan, and. Uh, because I, I thought a long time, you know, people look at him, that was John Benson Sr.'s son. John Benson Sr. was a clean driver, well-respected, had a great following. But I think as we saw that he's, he developed it as far as the West Michigan fan base, he developed his own identity. I think looking back at that night, that was uh, that was a big night for that. What would you say is your favorite off-track story of Johnny Benson? Because you said you've known him for years and years and years. What is your favorite off-track story of Johnny Benson? I'm not hearing you. I think the question he was going to ask was his favorite off-track and related related story. Oh, you sure? one. Well, I, I'd probably just say, you know, when, when it was, I come to the NAS, I had a chance to go over to a shop a couple times. His shop over in Northeast Virginia, he worked out of his ass there and over there a couple times. I had a chance to go over there a couple times and just watch, you know, him and his father work on the cars, put it together. I mean, they were very competitive in the ASA series. He was Rookie of the Year. He won a championship. He won races. And this was basically a, a small little team uh, that uh, that they had. It was Johnny and his father and friends. And his mom and sister would help out, too. And just wearing over there, I think, in those early days and, and just watching how they worked and the work ethic and uh, the knowledge that they had, I think it was pretty clear that they um, – the guy was, was going to do so many things in the sport of racing because of the professionalism and their approach, I think. So just watching the inner work of Johnny, not just on the track, but you know, the preparation he had. Uh, first of all, is it uh, is my mic for now? It's going in and out. Okay. Um, so just uh, look, uh, I could look into that in just a second. But uh, so. Good now. Okay. So when. um. What was it like doing the race hub uh, video or interview? Oh, fun. You know, that was fun. To, I enjoyed getting a chance to talk about Johnny and sharing a story with the viewers. Uh, race hub is a, a great, uh, great production of what they do. Um, I, it wasn't a great topic because we had to talk a little bit about, you know, 2009 and, and, and that tragic uh, crash that he had. But uh, it was exciting to have a chance to, to share Johnny's story and uh, hopefully. Hopefully the viewers got a chance of, to see maybe a little, a little bit more, you know, inside, of, you know, a closer look at Johnny Benson, maybe the, the other wise one. Yeah. Um, now it comes to the point in the interview where we allow uh, the guests to open the floor for, for excuse me, our, um, you know, Mary or myself. Do you have any questions for one of us or both of us or um, the floor is yours, Steve? Yeah, just uh, appreciate you guys having me here today and talking about. Uh, you know, sports that I've long been passionate about and uh, have had a chance to uh, cover uh, and enjoy as a fan, too. So, but let me ask you, what's been the favorite race uh, either of you have gone to uh, attended uh, during uh, in your life? I'll Mary go first because there have been a lot of good ones in my lifetime. <laughs> well, most of the races that I went to back when I was going to races were like the early 2000s bush races. And the one that I remember the most that I really loved the most was the 2003 Funai 250. And it was the race where the other Johnny that I remember, Johnny Sauter, who's currently at this point in the truck series, basically pulled a bump and run on Matt Kenseth, and everyone ate it up. And when Kenseth tried to chew him out post-race on the PA system, everyone just let Kenseth have it. Because Kenseth <laughs> was kind of notorious for that back in the day. <laughs> that was at Richmond, my yeah, home track. Oh, cool. Yeah, running in the truck series now, and uh, looks like this might be the end of the road for Matt Kenseth, it looks like, uh, coming back this year, filling up with Kyle Larson after he lost his ride, but uh, 
Yeah, still a really good short, short track driver for sure. So. Yeah, so probably my favorite race I attended was 2014 at Michigan, uh, the August race. Uh, when my all-time favorite driver, Jeff Gordon, won Michigan for the first time in 13 years. But I remember that race most, Kyle Larson's big fire when the tire caught fire and he didn't get out. And uh, that was when NASCAR implemented the rule of um, you have to get out of the car uh, if the car is on fire, which looks like no duh. Now I do want to. Um, Alex, you cut again. Uh, I think you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I cut out again. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me better? Yep, yeah, you're back. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, like I said, 2014 August Michigan, Jeff Gordon won. But um, you know Johnny, like I said, Johnny has had a fascinating life and he's had a phenomenal career. And uh, I would like to. I took this opportunity to announce that I am writing Johnny Benson's story into a book uh, with help from Steve. Uh, Steve, first off, thank you for uh, helping me out with that. And, uh, you know, if you have any uh, Johnny Benson stories, please send them my way. You can uh, uh, send them via face, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or if you have me on Facebook, which I know a good majority of my subscribers here do. Um, so... Yeah, uh, this has been a fun interview. I, you know, Stevie, with your knowledge of all the West Michigan auto racing, and uh, I'm sorry about my camera. That uh, that my computer's notorious for that. But uh, so th this has really been an honor to interview you, and uh, I'm pretty sure Mary can say the same. Um, do you uh, have any uh, closing remarks? Because uh, you said you had about 30 minutes, and uh, we don't want to take too much of your time. No, I'm good, guys. And, and thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's been fun reminiscing. And uh, yeah, good luck with the book. We'll look forward to hearing about it as uh, as you progress through the uh, through the books. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, if I need anything, I'll definitely tell you. You bet. You bet. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Yep. No it's been an honor. Me too.